Father, it is such a privilege and a pleasure and an obligation to be before your people today. Your anointing is here. Your presence is here. Your spirit is here. Now speak to us through your word. Let the book talk. Let the word not come back void. And in everything I do and in everything I say, Lord, I take none of your glory. I take none of your honor. I take none of your praise. But I will point everyone back to you. I thank you for even now as I decrease, increase inside of me. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. I want for 30 seconds just to give God a praise. be seated in a moment but I, I did morning prayer from the sanctuary this morning and as I was standing I came I was walking the aisles and praying and I came behind the pulpit and I could see the building full behind the pulpit and praying I said Lord you know I need my own so yeah yeah because I I don't know y'all y'all gotta help me y'all I, I was sitting here can y'all can I just can I just be me for a minute I know it's I know it's resurrection selling but can I just be me I was sitting in the I was sitting in the chair and I was thinking no I was standing in worship right this morning I was worshiping and I was thinking we're gonna have an overflow and brother Chris, my security gonna have to run to the overflow because I'm gonna be laying hands in the overflow. And they will say, "What pastor at? He in the overflow laying hands. Somebody gonna get him. He's supposed to be in the main service. He in the overflow." Like, oh God, I ain't gonna. Good God Almighty. Yeah, yeah. But that's just the type of God we serve. Amen. Come on, let's go to the book, y'all. Let's go to the book. The Gospel according to St. Matthew. Get your tablet, get your iPhone, whatever. If you're old school, pull up your Bible. I might, I'm in the King James Version, so you'll be fine. But however you pull it up, pull it up this morning. Let's go to the book. The Gospel according to St. Matthew. I want to go to chapter 28. Oh, people still got Bible. Thank God. I still heard pages turning. Huh? Matthew 28. Matthew 28 and 1. You, do you have it? Yes. Look what the King James Version says. It says, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning. His raiment was white as snow. And for the fear of him, the keepers did shake 
and became as dead men. And the angel said unto the women, didn't say unto the people, said unto the women, because the women came looking for him, said unto the women, fear ye not, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here. Oh, I like that. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. Behold, he cometh before you there shall, into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy. And they did run to bring his disciples word for a few minutes as I think I'm going to end this series called Jesus Gone Wild. I want to end it today with, oh, what do I want? I want to end it today with, he got up for me. Yeah. I want you to look at your neighbor. I want you to make it personal this morning. Even let your neck broke take a little bit. Tell him he got up for me. <laughs> oh, yes, he did. You can be, you can be seated in there. In the presence of the Lord, y'all, he got up for me. He got up for me, y'all. The, the, the resurrection of us, the resurrection of us from sinners to children of God was a three-part process. It was a three-part process. The crucifixion, the burial, and the resurrection. And as important as the process was, the motivation behind it was just as important. He did it for us. I like to say, like I told you, I like to make it personal. He did it for me. Yeah, I get a little cocky about it. Yeah, he did it for me. Yeah, he, he got up for me. He got up for me. So, so as, as I've only got four points, I'm going to hit four points and I'm going to be out. If, if he stayed on the cross for me and I was on his mind, if he died for me, wouldn't it be logical that he got up for me? He stayed on the cross for me. He died for me. And to finish the process, he got up for me. So my first point today is that Jesus was concerned about you. Yeah, he was concerned about you. Not only was he concerned about you then, he's concerned about you now. He's concerned about your life. He's concerned about your dreams. He's concerned about your future. You are significant and important to him. He got up for you. In other words, he made it personal. Jesus made it personal. It wasn't just a process. He made it personal for you and me. And although we come in corporate worship and we do corporate worship together, when we're really worshiping God, it's just us and him. When you're really in worship, you don't know who's beside you, who came in behind you. It's just you and him because it's personal. It's personal. And because it's personal, he got up with me and you in mind. And not only did he get up for me and you in mind, he got up for the reason that you're here. He got up so you could be here. He got up for me. He got up for you. That brings a whole different light on my life because people are trying to tell me I'm insignificant, but Jesus got up for me. Oh, y'all ain't gonna hurt me today. They, they trying to tell me what, what I do in life don't matter, but hold up, he got up for me. You trying to tell me, well, well, you just ain't all that, ain't all that. What if I'm not? He still got up. I give you the point. Maybe I'm not all that, but I was enough for him to get up for. Yeah. He got up for me. 
And if he got up for me, that should make me shake myself. So hold up. I was worthy enough. I was worthy enough for him to get up for me. Why am I letting people stop me from doing what I need to do? Why am I letting people and circumstance stop me when he got up for me? He got up for me. He made it personal. He already knew all the stuff I was going to do. See, some of y'all should have said amen right there. Yeah, he, he knew all the stuff I was going to do and some of the stuff I'm still planning to do. Oh, God, let me talk on this side, Dickie Joy. Yeah, he, he, he knew, he know that, but yet still, he still got up. He still got, now, hold up. I want you to go back to the last dumb thing you did. And he still got up, even though you, oh, I ain't going, I ain't going the other day. He still got up after the last thing you did. After the last time you told him, I'm not going to do it again, Lord. Just, just get me out of this one. And I promise I won't do it again. And you still did it again. And he knew you were, but he still got up. Still got up for you. Still got up for you. Can I, can I get deep with you? Jesus said, if I stay here, they can't have, they can't mess up more than one time. Let me get up so they can mess up for more than one time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you, Jesus got up so you can mess up all them times you done messed up so you can have a chance to get it right. He got up for you. He got up for me. Can I go to point number two? If redemption is a three-part process, which it is, if the last part was not completed, then the other two parts would have been null and void. It would have been invalid. If Jesus didn't get up, the crucifixion would have been for nothing. The burial would have been for nothing. Because other sacrifices have went to the temple and they sacrificed it and the blood was spread for them. But none of those sacrifices got up. All through the years they brought the lambs and, the, and all kinds of creatures for the different sins they did. I'm glad they don't do that today because y'all will have this place. I ain't going there. I ain't going there this morning. They brought all the stuff but none of them got up. This sacrifice Laid down his life. Got up. He had to complete the process. Why? So we wouldn't have to. So we wouldn't have to. He completed the whole thing. He completed the process. He was crucified. He died. But then he didn't stay down. He got up. So that nobody could say. He didn't have the power to get up. So nobody could say that it's invalid because you didn't complete this. Or you didn't do this. He said, no, I'm going to finish this thing once and for all. So he got up. So that the devil could not be an accuser of the brothers, of the brethren, and tell the Lord, it's not finished, Lord. Because the devil is in details too. So it would have been null and void if he didn't complete the process. But Jesus said, I don't, I'm not, I'm not lazy and I don't half step. I'm going to complete everything I do. So I'm going to die. I'm going to be buried. But I like the way he got up because the stone was in front of the grave. And if he had just gotten up and nobody removed the stone, nobody would knew he was up. But the Bible declared because he was already gone when the stone was removed. Read the story. The Bible is very, read the story. The angel removed the stone and they said, go look where he laid. He's not there. 
The angel didn't remove the stone for him to get out. The angel removed the stone so we know he was already out. Yeah. So removed the stone so we would know he was free. My third point, y'all, is a verbal collage. You ever seen a picture collage? But my third point is a verbal collage. Follow me for a moment. He got up. He got up so I can get up. Jesus doesn't want anything to hold us down. He got up so I can hold my head up. Oh, God, y'all ain't going to help me this morning. He got up so I could look up. I look into the hills with coming my help. My help cometh from the Lord. He got up so I could climb up. You know how many holes we've been in? But because Jesus got up, we can climb out up. Somebody ought to help me in here. He got up so I can accelerate up. What you're talking about, Pastor, a plane don't go slow when it's going up in the air. It accelerates. It takes speed. It goes faster than normal. Jesus got up so you don't have to stay where you are. You can accelerate up to the next level. They say you can't make it in that short period of time. Watch Jesus. They say you can't get a promotion that fast. Watch Jesus. They say you can't get a house that fast. Watch Jesus. They say you can't be financed that fast. Watch Jesus. They say you can't have that. Watch Jesus. And nobody got healed that quick. He got up so I can accelerate up. Oh, God, but then he got up so I could soar up like an eagle. I ain't never seen an eagle at ground level fly. Jesus. Buzzards. Pigeons. Crows. Stay low to the ground. Eagle said, I got to go higher. Do I got any eagles in the house? Oh, God, I ain't going to help nobody. You been, God, Jesus said, I got up because you have been too low to the ground. They have been talking about you and keeping you down. They have been criticizing and keeping you down. They have been making fun of you and keeping you down. But Jesus said, I got up so you can soar up. See, see, if you ever seen an eagle and he stretched his wings, everybody got to move out the way. See, you know what your problem is? You got your enemies too close to you. You won't stretch your... Yeah, I, know. I feel like preaching this morning. See, I want my enemies to get close to me because when I stretch my wings, everything that's in my way, everything that's trying to hold me down, everything that's trying to keep me, when I stretch my wings, Anybody feel like stretching their wings this morning? Anybody feel like soaring like an eagle this morning? Have you been down too long? Have you been depressed too long? Have you been down and out too long? I feel like preaching. Have you been stretch those wings and soar? Jesus got up so I can soar up. Dig it, Jordan. Those young people who came yesterday, some of them did not have no hope until you talked to them. Some of them didn't think they could go to school until you talked to them. But I saw some young people stretch. Oh, God, y'all gonna help me. I saw them stretch their wings. They were bound, but they came to the education of hope. They said, well, maybe I can stretch one wing. Well, that wing feel good. Well, maybe I can stretch another wing. That one feel good. Maybe I can fly. Can I help y'all? I ain't never seen an eagle don't try to fly. I ain't never seen an eagle don't try to fly. Even when an eagle have a baby, they drop him out the nest to make him fly. And before he hits the ground, he scoops him up. But guess what? Just because he don't fly one time don't mean he's not going to drop him again. And some of y'all need to start tripping. That's right. Because God been dropping you. He ain't let you hit the ground. And you won't fly. And he swing by and pick you up. And you mad because he keep on dropping you. He going to keep on dropping you till you fly. Oh, God, I got to get out of here. He going to keep on dropping you 
tell you fly because you're not a buzzer. You're not a pigeon. You're an eagle. Stretch your wings and fly. I can I preach for a few minutes? I lost one job. That's Jesus just dropping me, but he won't let me go under. They said no at one place. That's Jesus dropping me, but he won't let me go under. Because somebody's going to open up a door. Why? Because I'm an eagle. And this is what I learned. Bro, this is what I learned. Eagles, no eagles. Maybe, maybe, maybe you don't get no respect for the people you hanging with because they ain't eagles. Can I help somebody in this house today? Maybe you hanging with pigeons and crows and buzzers and they don't recognize your potential. They don't know who you are. You got to stay with an eagle. You got to hang out with eagles. An eagle will show you how to stretch those wings. An eagle will show you how to fly. An eagle will show you how to soar without even flapping your wings. Just glide, baby. A pigeon can't show you how to glide. You an eagle hanging around pigeons. You an eagle hanging around buzzards. Buzzards eat off the ground. Pigeons cast them out of the air. Eagle snatch things out of there. Well, I'm coming to get you. When the eagle comes to get you, you can run, but you can't hide because you just yeah. a buzzer wait till you're dead. You got some people trying to wait till you're dead. But this is Resurrection Sunday. You might have been dead. You might have been down. You might have been out. But resurrection power is raising you. Can I tell you something? Some of y'all been dead too long. I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach if I don't preach. So some of y'all been dead too long. And you like, you like Martha told Jesus, Jesus by now, he stinketh. And you've been stinking for a long time. But I heard God say, God said, Steep don't bother me. Y'all oh, ain't gonna help me in here. <laughs> steep don't bother me. Because I go, I got to smell the steep in order to raise you from the dead. You notice, Jesus didn't respond to Martha when she said, By now he stinketh. He didn't, that didn't bother him. Jesus said, when you hang around dead people, you raise them from the dead, you got to deal with the stink. So the stink don't bother him. What are you trying to tell me, Pastor? The stuff you in don't bother Jesus. The jump you got yourself into don't bother Jesus. That don't bother him. He got to walk in that in order to get you out of it. He's here to resurrect because there's an eagle. There's an eagle. There's an eagle inside of you. And the thing is, can I help you today? The reason why some of you are so frustrated is because the eagle's trying to get out. The eagle's trying to get out. He's trying to soar. Because the eagle don't feel good all caged in. You cage in the eagle, he'll die. That's what God came to loose you today. He can't elude you today. He can't elude you today. Because you can't fly all bound up. You're going to fly with your weed stretch. He came to lose you today. But can I hit point number four? The text, I did not read the verses before this text in verse 27. Chap verse, chapter 27, verses 62 to 66. You don't have to go there. But the chief priest said, hold up, this is Jesus. Can I eat Nazit for a minute? Is that all right? Can I eat Nazit? Eat Nazit, contemporize it, and then analyze it. Is that all right? Okay. So he said, he's the chief priest said, Pilate, that boy said he's going to get up in three days. So this is what I want to do. I want, we want to put a stone in front of it. And we don't just want to put a stone in front of it. We want to seal it. And then we want to put some guards in front of it. Because we're scared 
that his disciples are going to come in the middle of the night and steal him away. So, so Pilate said, do what you want to do. So they put a stone in front of it because it wasn't a stone in front of it at first. And they sealed it. And they put gods in front of it. And he still got out. Yeah. What the? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. First of all, you got to understand when they, what the Jews did. They wrapped him up. He won't loose like we got casters now. No, they wrapped him up like a mummy. Put a veil on his face. Rolled a stone. Sealed it up. And put gods in front of it. And he still... He reminds me of Houdini. He still got up. So I'm here to tell you, you mean they got you boxed in on every side? They say you won't make it. Got guards in front of you. You still, oh God, you still coming out. They did everything they could to keep you down, but you still coming out. You know why? Can I catch, can I help y'all? You know why they did all that? They were scared that Jesus will really get up. Can I help y'all? Let me take my glasses off so I can't see none of y'all faces. Some of y'all got some people who are scared that you are about to break loose. See, they only big because you little. <laughs> they only important because they put you down. <laughs> but you got some people trying to, but they scared if you ever If you ever break loose, if you ever get, it's like being, it's like being the backup quarterback. And the, and the starting quarterback know you better than they are. But they ain't going to never let you get in the game. And they get hurt. And they be like, Lord, let me, no, no, please don't put him in there. Because they know if I sit down, I ain't never getting back up again. If I ever let that boy start, he ain't going to take off. And you got some people in your life that trying to hold you down. Because they know if you ever get started. If you ever get started, they ain't get their job back. They ain't get their position back. They ain't going. If you ever get started. So the text said, the text says, the text says that they did everything they could to keep Jesus locked up. And they couldn't keep him locked up. And the only reason the angel made so much noise is that everybody could recognize that Jesus was gone. I'm going to help you. God was about to make some noise in your life. Because he wants everybody to know he done set you free. Oh, God. You, see, see, can y'all stop being too holy? I, I'm humble. I don't want, no. No, I want you to know God did it for me. I want you to know he delivered me. I'm being boastful in the God that I serve. Because if you can be boastful about the drinking you did last night <laughs> and all the stuff you smoked <laughs> and how many women you were with, why can't I be boastful about what God did for me? Y'all have to stop playing me this morning. <laughs> you were boastful about your sin. I'm going to be boastful about my God. I'm not going to be quiet. He did too much for me to be quiet. <laughs> and see... And see, oh God, I gotta get out here. And see, since this the devil know you were a bit mouth for him, he trying to make sure you don't be a bit mouth for God. Because what I've learned about salvation, he don't change what's in you. He just use it for his glory. And so you were stubborn in the world, and God said, I still need you to be stubborn for me now. Yeah, you were out there in the world, I still need you to be out there for me. Because God need all of us. And with all our different personalities and all our different characters and all our different stuff, he need all of us in certain places at certain times. To give him the glory. But that wasn't my point. Point number four. <laughs> that wasn't my point. Point number four says, look, 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 look. If they could not stop Jesus, they can't stop you. If Jesus, Jesus got up. Listen to this, y'all. Jesus got up to give you the right to look the devil in his face and tell him you couldn't stop Jesus and you're not going to stop me. 
So see that the house got quiet because y'all see you got to look your bills in the face and say you couldn't stop Jesus and you're not gonna stop me. You got to look at the last time you got declined for a promotion and look look the look in the eye and say you couldn't stop Jesus and you're not gonna stop me. You got to look your bank account. Oh, that ain't gonna help nobody today, Pastor. I want to look at my bank account. Look at it and then you couldn't stop Jesus and you're not gonna stop me. Why? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in oh God. Y'all ain't going to help me. Greater is he that is in me than he that who's in me. Jesus is in me. Jesus is in me. Jesus is in me. Jesus is in me. And if Jesus is in me, I need to be all that he wants me to be on the inside. So you got to stop letting a certain nose. People say you get one no and you crying. Hold up. Maybe you ain't have a grandma like mine. She said no a whole lot of times. And dare me to cry. Boy, you better shut up. You get one no. Don't you know your no is the stepping. It's the stairs to your yes. Let me show it to you. Because sometimes the no with what you think you want ain't what you need. And so since you got no, it calls you to keep looking. And you get another no and you keep looking. And finally you get to the one that you like. Oh, God. I remember me and Crystal was looking for a house. We were looking for a house. And we found a couple of good houses and they said No. <laughs> They, they said no. They said no. Yeah, they said no. But when we got to the house that we needed. <laughs> See, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you this. Even when they say it's not for you, it'll be for you. So I told her she ain't listen. That's the one time she ain't listened to her daddy. I told her to bid a certain amount, and she ain't do that. She bid higher. I told her, okay, that's fine. So there was somebody who bid it lower, and they, and they were going to give it to them. But they backed out. And the bank came back and said, well, we'll give it to you, but can you pay this amount? Well, the amount they asked her to pay is the amount I told her to bid in the first place. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, it's about, but even when they say it's not for you, it's for you. Even when you got somebody in front of you, it'll still be for you. Have you ever been in a line, a long line, and all of a sudden people start getting out the line? And you look around trying to figure out what's wrong. You better stay in that line. God just making room for you. Oh, y'all ain't gonna hurt me. Y'all ain't gonna hurt me. Y'all ain't gonna hurt you, you, you trying to look around. You better stay. Yeah, you get out of line. Yeah, you, you get out of line. You, yeah, you get out of line. Lord, can you get that one out of line too? Yeah, move that one. Can you move that one? See, you gotta get bold with this thing. Lord, I got somewhere to go and this line is too long. Can you move this out? I take the next one on this line. Let them go. And you the next. Oh, God, y'all ain't gonna help me. You gotta understand what God is trying to do on the inside to manifest itself on the outside. So what you're saying, Pastor Eaton? I'm saying I need to change my mentality. I need to change my mentality. I got to stop expecting the no and expect the yes. And when they say no, I'm just surprised. Okay. Hey, thank you, though. Glad. And keep it going. You ain't crying. No, I ain't crying because you ain't don't know what I'm going to get an answer from. And the push come to shove if God got to create a something for me just to be where he wants me to be. So I got I to gotta change. Too many of us are scared. You, you, did you read the text? It said they went. I caught, I caught this in the text. The last verse of the text I read said they left with fear and joy. Did y'all catch that? They left with fear and joy. They were still scared. But they had joy. And that's the problem. We're scared of a no. But sometimes a no is what you need. A no is what you need. A no made you get up and get, oh, I got to get my stuff together because they ain't playing. A no made you move to the next position. A no made you move to the next job. A no made you look somewhere else. Don't be scared of the no. I tell some people, go ask them. All they can do is say no. 
All they can do is say no. If you don't got nothing anyway, then no ain't taking nothing from you. I don't got a car anyway, so if you tell me I can't have that one, it ain't changing my circumstance. Can't just be real. It ain't changing my circumstance. If the one I got is broke down on his last leg and you say no, I still got the one I got. But there's a chance you might say yes. And we're allowing the devil to stop us from sowing like an eagle. I need to change my mentality. I need to change my mentality. I need to change my mentality. I'm going back to the educational huddle because since Christina was giving her presentation about interviewing, and Deacon Joe said something real good. He said, they, they told me sometimes you need to switch on the interview. You need to, the one that's interviewing you from the job, you need to be the one interviewing them. And see, that's what you need to do when God, when God got your back and they look like they're acting crazy, you need to switch that thing and say, Mud, this is the reason why you need me. You got to let the devil know, I don't know why you're tripping because do you know who I am? You got to tell you, you got to switch on your circumstance. Your circumstance is saying you can't make it. Your circumstance is saying you can't, can't, can't go to the next level. Your circumstance, you got to turn that thing on the system. Circumstance and say, hold up, hold up. You the one that ain't going to make it. You the one that ain't going to hold me down. You got to switch the thing. And I can because greater is he that is in me. See, that's the difference. That's the difference between me and Dr. Phil. That's the difference. It's the thing on the inside of me, not the thing in my head. I don't, have a, I don't have a bachelor's or a master's, but I got Jesus. And where the degree can't take me, Jesus will. The doors that the degree can't open, Jesus will. That's all we've got to change because... You got to think, I want you to meditate on that thing. He got up for me with my bad self, with my unorganized self, with my lazy self, with, with all, the, all the bad stuff. He got up for me. So can I get up for myself? Oh, God. Can I close on that? Can I get up for myself? If he got up for me, he got up for me, so I'll get up for myself. I've been down too long. I've been disgusted too long. Can I help somebody? I've been holding on to this hurt too long. I've been holding on too long. Jesus got up for me so I wouldn't have to hold on to it. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So I thought about that. Can, can I close with this, 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 maybe this theology thinking? I thought about that. He didn't tell me I wasn't going to have no burden. He didn't tell me I wasn't going to have no yoke. You notice that? He didn't say, I'm going to take yours and not give you something. He said, no, no. Let me take your burden, which is heavy, and let me take your, your yoke, but I'm going to give you my yoke and my burden. He didn't tell me I wasn't going to have a yoke. He didn't tell me I wasn't going to have a burden. He just said, take mine. Because mine is light. Mine is easy. You're trying to go burdenless. Yokeless. And that's not life. But I can have a yoke and a burden and it's easy and light. Oh, God. Let me put it to you this way as I got to get out of here. You can have a job that's easy. Or you can have a job that's hard. But you got to have. <laughs> I can't make it no plainer than that. The Bible says you don't work, you don't eat. So you can have a job that's easy. You have a job that's hard. But you got to have a job. So Jesus is saying the same thing. You got to have a burden. You got to have a yoke. Do you want the hard one and the heavy one? Or do you want the easy one and the light one? Why? Because Jesus.
got up for you. Come on, give him a praise right there. Oh, God. Boy, you, you, need to, you need to re-examine some stuff. You need to look over some dreams you got. You need to look over some vision you got and say, hey, I can do that. I can be that. I can go there. I can do this. Because he got up for me. He got up for me. Hey, know some of y'all, I'm not going to waste him getting up for me. I've been listening to a song called Cover Me. And he said, I just want to make you smile. I was listening. I was driving from here from prayer, listening to that song. I had to hold back the tears because, Lord, I just want to make you smile. I, 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 just want, I just want you to get glory out of my life. And as long as I walk in defeat, on purpose hear me please as long as I walk in defeat on purpose he's not getting no glory I may have to fall sometimes but I'm going to get back up but as long as I'm walking in defeat on purpose God gets no glory but when I'm walking in defeat and I'm still walking God gets the glory I'm still getting up. God gets the glory. Man said it ain't going to work. God said just keep walking, son. I'm still, he's still getting the glory. I think, really, I can sum it up like this. Because John P. Key said it best. He did it all just for me WC can we lift, lift those hands to the Lord we're getting out of here y'all because he did it all just for me father I give you glory and praise now because you've been good to us and you got up just for me let that ring in my ears and in our spirit of the Lord when the enemy tries to take us out let that rise up you did it just for me i thank you keep us as apples of our own eye protect us from all her harm and danger as we leave this place the most certainly never from our presence and we who love thee so will give it the glory praise and all the honor for it is in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen